Hey guys, look what's arrived in the mail. It's the Behringer Rhythm Designer RD8. Uh, I recently uh, picked this up online for a very good price. It was on sale and I have to give a big shout out to Moog Audio in Montreal, Canada for uh, shipping it to me extra quick. So uh, really excited to take a look at this and, and check it out. Um, so why don't we just do a quick unboxing here and we'll take a look inside. Instruction booklet. Are. The power supply. Okay. So here is the Behringer Rhythm Designer RD8. Let's get it set up and listen to a few sounds and uh, make some beats. Okay, so here we have the Behringer Rhythm Designer RD8. This is an analog drum machine based on the classic Roland TR-808, of course. Um, and I thought we'd just take a little bit of time to go over some of the features and functionality, uh, listen to some sounds, and get into some beat making and things like that. So right off the top, you can see it's pretty fully featured. You've got the instruments themselves here. Uh, you know, the bass drum, the snare drum, the congas, the toms, the rim shot, hand claps, claves, etc cowbell of course and the cymbals and hi-hats that's all here on the front panel uh, there's levels individual level control for each of these as well as tone and and decay for some of them and tuning for the bass drum etc so that's gives you a lot of hands-on flexibility there to shape the sounds to your desire and your needs uh, down here we've got the 16 step sequencer where you can input the uh, beats or the you know the hits for each one of these instruments uh, on each individual sort of track for each instrument. Uh, you can then construct, of course, songs out of that and chain patterns together uh, as you wish. So there's lots of features there. <clears throat> You've also got 
you know, note repeat and step repeat triggering here for some cool like fills and things like that as you play live, or you can also program some of that in on a per step basis. You can set things uh, such as the length of the patterns. So you can have anything from a 16 to a 32 to a 48 and all the way up to 64 step uh, patterns. And um, all of those steps can also be uh, any uh, length that you desire as well within that. So up here on the left, there's something called the uh, wave designer and as well, there's built-in effects. So Behringer's included a resonant low pass and high pass filter here with cutoff control as well as resonance. And the wave designer allows you to enhance um, any one of these sounds that you pass through the wave designer, uh, the attack transients or the sustain transients. So you have full control there as well. And that's really cool because it actually opens up a lot of new sound design possibilities and sound shaping, which I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, there's also some autofill capability here. You can have four different, uh, you know, fills available to you that you can fill in uh, as you're playing. And then you've got global control over things like tempo, swing, probability, and flams. And then, of course, you can also do uh, mutes and solos uh, as you're playing live for any of these uh, instruments as well. Okay, so let's take a listen to some of these sounds of the individual uh, instruments here. So if I select the bass drum, trigger this. Full control over the decay. As well as the tuning. You also have a tone control here for less click. Snare drum. You've got control over snap, as well as tone. Uh, low congas and low toms. So this is on low tom. Low conga. Mid tom. mid conga, high tom, high conga. These congas, these toms, they're really great for injecting some sort of, you know, Latin feel or uh, Afro-Cuban type of beats as well, or for things like uh, jungle and stuff like that in the background. It's really, really versatile. Rim shot and clave, these are uh, some classic sounds here as well, the claves. Rim shot, maracas, and of course the classic uh, hand claps. Now there's an offset knob here. If you pull it back, you get this reverb. Very cool. Of course, the classic 808 cowbell is here as well. Fortunately, there is no knob to control the pitch, but there is the cowbell there. And I've got, you've got uh, cymbals, open hats, and closed hats. So cymbal with decay. And then you've got control over the uh, tone as well. Open hats, decay, tone, closed hats, tone. Okay, so those are some of the sounds you can work with here. And of course you can mix and match and, and uh, combine these in any way you desire when you're building your beats. So. Let's now look at the actual beat. So I'm going to start a beat here. So if I go into step mode, you can see here, there's, it's currently in song mode. It's playing in um, song number three.
pattern number one, and within pattern number one, I have a 32 bar uh, pat or step sequence. You know, here's the bass drum playing, tracking, and if I switch to the snare, you can see what's going on with the snare. Same with the hi-hats. So this step sequencer allows you to obviously program your, your patterns in and, and also see them in real time and adjust as you need. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could go to the bass drum. And the other thing is here, if you press record, this is how you make edits um, that will be um, reflected as it goes. If you don't press record, anything you do will not save the next time the, the sequence passes through. So if you want to make changes to the sequence, make sure you hit record. So if I go to the bass drum here and I turn off auto scroll so I can see the first uh, 16 steps, I can remove some of these bass drum hits and put some other ones in. Mix it up. Right? So it changes accordingly. Same with the snare. If I put in a couple extra snare hits. Let's go to the 32nd step. Right? So that's pretty cool. You can modify things as you go. Uh, maybe we want to add in some congas and toms. Select that. So there we have that. Now, if I wanted to put a fill in, you know, uh, all I need to do here is go to pattern, click auto fill, and I've got four. Uh, patterns I can select from. I would have to pre-program these fills, obviously, which I've done. So if I select fill number one, it'll come at the end of the of the loop. There it is. Okay, let's try a different one. Let's try this one, number two. It's just gonna wait for the next cycle. It's going to come through the next cycle here. There we go. So, very cool. All right, so if you want to see what's going on with the sequence itself, you have to be in step mode. You can see that here it's switching between 16 and 32. Currently, I'm looking at the 16th, uh, you know, steps 1 through 16. If I want to see it, you know, follow that tracking all the way through. I just hit auto scroll and it'll flip back and forth between these two. Similar, if, if I wanted to add more uh, length to this whole pattern, I could hit length, go up to 48 or 64 steps, and all I have to do is select the appropriate uh, time or a, a number of steps I want. So uh, this could be an odd metered uh, sequence. So let's say I put it at <clears throat> stopping at number six on bar, you know, 48. There's gonna be blank here. See this? Now it repeats, because I haven't programmed anything in these last few steps. So you have full flexibility here to program as you go. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now, but just know that that is available to you to adjust things as you wish here, so. Very handy, okay. Now let's look at some other cool things here. Um, we have, here on the right, we have step repeat and note repeat and a trigger button. So if I select step repeat and there's four buttons, one, two, three, or sorry, one, two, four, and eight, that corresponds to the number of, I guess, beats or perhaps uh, the bars or whatnot. But if I hold this, Wherever I hold that, if it's on one, it's gonna hold that beat. Cool, let's try 
too. You can see it's cycling between these two. There we go again, you see these two. Let's try four. You can actually get some new permutations as you go here, just with this trigger uh, for step repeat. Let's try eight. So it's, the, it's eight steps worth. Nice little loop. Okay, let's look at note repeat now. One. So it just repeats that one note. For this instrument, if I select bass drum, or if I select tom, it's gonna repeat that. Mid tom, right? Things like that. Now if I try two, four, So you can actually get very creative with this by uh, you know flipping between these as you go. Pretty cool. So that is note repeat and. That cannot actually be um, recorded in real time, but what you can do is, there's a settings menu here, you can actually program those sort of repeats, those note repeats, uh, on a per step basis. So you can get double hits and things like that, uh, or more uh, on whatever steps you want, which is great. Okay, so we've looked at that. Now if we look at here, there's under track, on the right, there's a mute and there's a solo option. So if I say mute, I press mute, I can now select which instruments I want to mute. So if I mute the toms, takes them out, just keeps everything else playing. Unselect, they come back. If I take out the snare, Bring it back. Similarly with solo, if I just want to solo a particular instrument or multiple. Bass drum. Very cool, very handy. All right, let's bring them back. Take us out of that mode. All right, so that's mute and solo. Uh, as well, here you have a global data knob currently set to tempo, so you can obviously adjust the tempo as you go. And this goes all the way up to 200 something, 240. Goes down to 20. So that's great to have. You've also got swing. And that goes up to 75. You can hear the swing there. Sometimes it's nice to have just a little bit of swing to inject a little bit more life. Speaking of that, there's a probability option here. So this is a global probability feature where uh, it will basically sort of, currently at 100, it's gonna play everything 100% of the time. If we drop it, uh, certain instruments, or all of these instruments at this time will randomly sort of come in according to the probability value. 
mean, if I bring it to zero, nothing will really play very often at all. So bring this back up. So that can inject a little bit more sort of randomness or life into the beat. So it's not always static, not always the same beat. It's good to have that option there. You might want to try something around 90 or 95 or whatever uh, feels right for you. But it's great to have that. Now the other option here is Flam. Uh, by default, this is a global option here and you'll hear this. It's on all instruments. Gives sort of a coursing effect. Or a slight delay. Now in the menu, in the settings menu, you can actually adjust the flam parameters for each instrument if you like, so it doesn't affect all of them. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time to set that up. Uh, but uh, you know that's available to you if you if you need flams, which is great to have. So. That's the tempo swing, probability, and flam option uh, there as well. Now, the really cool thing here is the FX section. So with any of these instruments, you can send them into the wave designer and then from the wave designer into the effects, uh, low pass, high pass. So if I turn on the wave designer, it's now asking me, okay, what do I want to send to the wave designer? I'm going to select bass drum and snare and by doing so, I have control now over the attack and sustain transients. So I'm going to bring up the attack. You can hear it's a bit more punchy. Now I'm going to bring up the sustain. Gets even louder. And now that sustain is in addition to the decay, for the, especially for the bass drum. That really extends it even further. Gives it a bit more punch, a bit more power. Now, if I'm going to enable the uh, low pass filter, you can hear it instantly changes the tone and I can sweep through this. That's without resonance. I'm gonna increase the resonance now to max. Very cool. Of course, you can really tweak that as you go, get some tones if I put something else through this let's say one of these toms I'm going to now enable the high pass filter on the kick. Let's bring in one of these um, hand claps. So if I go to step mode, select hand clap, put in some claps. Going to reduce the offset. Going to put the hand claps through the wave designer and into the filter. Lower the volume slightly. So you can get that sort of distant 
sound from those claps. It's really cool. All right, I can also run these hi-hats through it. Very nice. Now, the great thing with this effects uh, designer here is that you can also uh, record your, um, you know, your motions on the filter here. It records, it has automation of the cutoff. So, currently, it's in record mode, it's blinking. Both of these are blinking, tap, hold, and on. So now if I tweak this, record mode and it's going to play back what I did. Really cool. Okay. Now, of course, you can keep that going and just tweak as you go. Okay, let's look at the settings menu now. So you have various functions here, and you can see that anything that's blinking means it's available to access. So it's referring to the top level um, menu items here. So MIDI, USB, clock, mapping for parameters, uh, preferences, filter, poly mode, meaning um, polymeter or polyrhythms, randomization, probability. So you can do probability per step not only just globally, but per step, per instrument, um, as well as flam control and repeats. So, you know, for instance, with uh, the random mode, I can say I want the snares to be completely random on, you know, steps one through 16. I want it on this step. Same with the bass drum. So now it's going to be random. Similar if I wanted to program in, uh, let's say some repeats, I can do that here on a per step basis. So if I take a look at the snare drum, snare drum is currently on, let's say these steps here, nine and 10. If I want a double hit, go into repeat, step nine, and I'll select two hits with no repeat on. There we go. Same with step 10. There we go, I got two in a row. I can make this four, it'll be faster. Some little sort of ratcheting there. I can also make this eight. There you go. So you can program those sort of note steps and ratcheting within the pattern itself and within the, the, uh, the step, which is great to have. As well, you can also control, uh, of course, the time. So you've got one eighth, one eighth triplets, you know, sixteenths, sixteen triplets, and, and 32 se 30 seconds. Uh, so you have full control of that device. You know, select sixteen triplets. Going to speed it up. Thirty seconds, eighth triplets, and eighths. Slows it down. So we'll just put it back in the sixteenth. Okay. So that is, you know, sort of a high level overview of that uh, functionality there. So, you know, this is a great um, drum machine for, you know, just mucking about or obviously programming intricate beats. Uh, you can, of course, save these patterns anytime you want to save. Let's say, you know, this pattern we have going right now, I would go to pattern, click save, click pattern. Which pattern do I want to save this to? The white light means that is the current pattern. Uh, memory that it's going to save to. So I'm going to select that. It's going to blink again, ask me to confirm. I'm going to click save. It's now saved to uh, pattern one. And it's also saved within song number three. So basically there's 64 steps, you know, to work with. Um, there's 16 patterns that you can save. And then there's 
within that, uh, within a song, you can save 16 patterns. So <laughs> there's lots of variety that you can get and, and you know, save within the machine. So let's, uh, let's take a look now at maybe just doing some random jams. So I'm gonna start from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to now start from scratch with a blank uh, canvas here and just create some beats as we go and tweak everything uh, as we go along. So just hopefully we'll give you a nice uh, sort of overview of what it sounds like uh, in a live performance mode.
Okay, well, that was quite the jam. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I tried to showcase a little bit, you know, of what the uh, RD8 can do. Um, you know, it was just one pattern with some probability mixed in and, and such and mixing and matching various parameters. But, you know, I just wanted to give you a feel of some of the types of sounds you can get out of this machine. It's, a, in my opinion, a fantastic analog drum machine for the price that it's going for. Uh, the capabilities here that really take it to the next level, especially this effect section and the wave designer really gives you a lot of flexibility to kind of come up with new sounds and, and just shape things as you go. And the ability to actually automate that cutoff knob and save that as well into the actual patterns and, and recall that uh, is, is amazing. It's, it's a, such an awesome feature to have. And I really love the sound of the you know, the drums here, uh, you've got, you know, the bass drum, the snare drum, the classic, you know, cowbell, all that stuff. Everything here sounds fantastic. You can get that nice analog distortion as soon as you start driving things a little bit more hard on the uh, resonance and the decay on that bass drum. You know, fantastic sounds there as well. So the other great thing, of course, is you've got those individual outs and you can process the sounds even further if you wanted to. So you can really take this thing to the next level. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to be posting some more jams in the future, I'm sure. But for now, I just wanted to give you a high-level overview and, and some sounds. So uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and we'll uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.